Hello, my name is Marjorie Wildcraft and I'm your presenter today on how to grow half of your food in your backyard in less than an hour per day. I'm not kidding, I've been doing this for many, many years and it's actually quite easy. In this introductory, I'll show you step by step what to do and how to get started. First of all, a little bit about me. For more than a decade, I've been running a, a research center dedicated to finding the fastest, easiest, and funnest ways to grow food and medicine. I love what I do, and I've attracted a group of really dedicated and talented people into an online community where we develop and share resources. The catalyzing statement for the, home, for the grow community is homegrown food on every table. And this one thing, growing at least part of your own food supply, it's the solution to so many issues we're facing these days. And you know we live in times when there are a lot of things to be deeply concerned about. Our highest values are authenticity, integrity, and usefulness. And what you get here from us is the real deal from people who are living it. So let's get started. First off, I want to be very clear in this introduction about what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real food. Food that is clean, nutritious, tasty, colorful, safe, beautiful, and most importantly, it's healthy. I'm not talking about GMOs or chemicals or hormones or anything else. I'm just talking about pure organic goodness. Here is my beautiful personal assistant who will keep track of the numbers for us. So let's start out and we're really going to talk about how many calories half of your own food supply is. I'll make the assumption that you're eating about 2,300 calories a day. Now, you can adjust that up or down. I'll just use this as an example, since it seems to be a good middle ground that would fit both males and females. And, of course, you can uh, adjust it for growing children and elders. I also want to be clear that I'm talking about a full year of 365 days. So my assistant has done the math for you, and it's a grand total of 419,000 750 calories that you need for at least one half of your food supply. We're going to start out and you'll be setting up a three component system. You're going to have rabbits for meat, you'll have chickens for eggs, and you'll create a garden to provide diversity and fun and, and actually quite frankly just deep nutrition. <laughs> Let's get started with the rabbits first and, and you'll see why I start with the rabbits in just a moment. When you're raising rabbits, you typically harvest them at about three months of age. An average, har an average harvest weight is about 10 pounds. And from that 10 pounds of weight, you're going to get about, realistically, about five pounds of meat, uh, plus the organs and the bones and the skins and, and all the other bits, right? In order to grow your rabbits, you'll create a simple system in your backyard. I'll, I'll show you what my setup is. I've got an eight cage rabbit hutch center. It's uh, 20 feet by two and a half feet wide. So I'm only talking about 50 square feet of space here. It runs along one side of my yard, it's kind of tucked out of the way. The 20 feet of cage is divided into eight hutches and I have one buck and three breeding does each in their own hutch. And then that leaves me with four hutches uh, left over to raise out the babies. You can easily grow 75 rabbits a year in this system. Actually, I regularly get about 80 rabbits a year, and some years I have pushed it to 90. In emergencies, if you had to, you could do that much too. But, you know, let's stay with a nice conservative number of 70 rabbit rabbits per year. And this is something I know with certainty that anybody can do. One pound of rabbit meat, and, and, and uh, these numbers are coming from the USDA, which, hey, you know, looks like the government is good for something, huh? Anyway... One pound of rabbit meat is 893 calories. When you grow your 75 rabbits with five pounds of rabbit meat each, that's going to equal 334,875 calories. Wow! That's why I told you we do the rabbits first. But I wanted to let you know there's a bonus when you process those rabbits. They have, in fact, some of the most nutritious food that you can grow in your backyard, and that is the organ meats, the liver and the kidneys and the hearts. Now, I would never recommend eating organ meat from the conventional food supply, but when you're growing your own animals, you know that that food is clean and safe, 
And those organ meats are deeply, deeply nutritious. The, the health and fitness members of the GROW community have been discussing the incredible value of organ meats and, and coming up with some really delicious ways to prepare them. Another really big bonus that you're going to get from the rabbits, and which is something that has been done from ancient times, is to take the bones and simmer them and make a broth from them that is rich in calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus. So if you're the kind of person who's taking supplements right now for those nutrients, once you start making these bone broths, uh, you may no longer need to take any more pills because you'll be able to make this at home yourself. So now we'll go back to your three component system. You've got your rabbits. 335, 334,000 calories. Wow. So you can see we've already made fantastic progress toward that goal of 419,000. Let's move on to the second part of the system. This is going to amaze you. Chickens raised for egg production. Amazingly, one laying hen produces about 250 eggs per year. And this really is a good average that a lot of backyard chicken enthusiasts and members of the GROW community can testify is easily achieved by anyone. I've certainly been able to easily get this yield. Uh, chickens don't lay one egg every day for the whole year because they molt at certain times. And there are times when it's just too hot or too cold to produce. But 250 eggs a year is a very reasonable number. I recommend also that you get one rooster and five laying hens, and from this little flock you'll get about 1,250 eggs a year. Let me say right at the beginning that you do not need a rooster in order to get hens to produce eggs. The hens will lay eggs just fine without a rooster, and you, you really don't need in them, especially if you're in an area where you've got neighbors really close by and you don't want to piss them off. Uh, but I will say, if you've got the space for them, they do do a lot of work to protect those hens, and it it's so touching. I, I've seen my rooster, he'll find a worm and he breaks it up into pieces and then he makes sure each one of his hens gets a piece and it's just really so cute and so amazing and they, they add so much fun to, fun to your backyard. Also if you do get predated, which maybe I shouldn't say if, I should say when you get a predator that uh, you know attacks your chickens and you know as you learn and your systems uh, get set up. These kind of things happen. Don't, don't worry, we'll be here to help you. But in a lot of cases, the rooster will actually be the first to go because he's down there defending the hens. And in some ways, he's a little bit of cushion for you in your egg production. So anyway, you've got these 1,250 eggs per year. And again, I'm wanting to present very reasonable numbers. And I'll assume that you're going to get medium-sized eggs, which are at about 63 calories per one. And so from that 1,250 eggs, there's my assistant, you get 78,750 healthy, beautiful calories. So let's go back in and check in on your three component system. Wow, you know, we've got almost all of it here, but the next thing we're gonna do is go into that garden for nutrition, color, zang, and just fun. You've only got 6,125 calories left to go. You getting excited yet? <laughs> I, I know I am. Anyway, yes, this is totally possible. Well, the garden isn't as big on calories, it is going to bring you varied nutrition and delicious taste and diversity and fiber and color. I mean, really, the garden has the delight in it. What I recommend with your garden is just to start with one small bed, maybe four feet by 12 and a half feet, which is, again, 50 square feet. Here's an example of the perfect first size garden bed. You're going to want more of these beds, and as your systems grow and expand, uh, you will. And I'll show you why in just a minute, but I hardly, highly, highly recommend you just start with one. Okay, let's show you just how much fun you're going to have in this small, small space. Let's, let's start out with tomatoes. Any master gardener will tell you that the most beloved garden vegetable is the tomatoes. Tomatoes, by far, are the most favorite vegetable to grow. And you know, we also have a lot of survival and preparedness folks in the, in the grow community, and I have to say that a great survival garden consists of just three plants, tomatoes, onions, and garlic. Why? Because with those three things, you can make almost anything else taste delicious. <laughs> oh dear, I got a little ahead of myself. So, um, three bush, bush tomato plants uses 30 square feet in four months, it's going to yield um, 30 to 120 pounds of tomatoes. 
The reason I have such a range is uh, because I'm talking about the difference in your experience level and your quality of soil. And, and probably in the beginning, you can only expect about 30 pounds. But as you develop your skills and abilities, you'll, you'll ramp up that amount. And so we're looking at anywhere from 2,400 to 9,600 calories, which is what you can produce from just 30 square feet of space, which is, you know, over half of your little garden bed. Um, vining green beans. Here, just in 20 square feet, take a look at these. You build a simple little trellis for them, let them climb up on that, you know, two and a half to six months. You're going to be able to pick these green beans. You're going to be able to get a yield from 6 to 22 pounds. And we're talking about 864 to 3,100 calories. Now, this particular green bean that I'm looking at, uh, I love this plant. This is one of my favorite. These are called yard-long beans. You eat them green, just like green beans, or you could let them dry and, dry and have them for soup beans in another time. But one of the reasons I love this plant is that uh, this one will grow even when it gets really, really hot in the summer. So... If you're in one of those places where, um, you know, it gets really, really hot, this guy will produce even when the temperatures are over 100 degrees. Squash. The grow community is definitely sharing squash recipes, and some of these are amazing. Shh. Here's a little secret for, horror, for how to more easily get squash into your diet if you don't like it. Dice it up into small pieces and then hide it in a tomato sauce like chilies or soups or stews. Squash grows so well and so easily, you really do want to figure out a way, and there are lots of delicious recipes. But take a look at what two yellow squash plants will do for you. Again, you're only going to be using about 20 square feet of space, and these things produce like crazy. You'll get 7 to 30 pounds of squash out of that 20 square foot space, and we're talking about 1,600 to 20, 7,200 calories. Now, my favorites, my absolute favorites, especially in the wintertime, are the cut-and-come-again vegetables. And these are, in the wintertime, it's going to be spinach and kale and lettuce and chard. In the summertime, it's things like lamb's quarters and purslane and New Zealand spinach. What's great about them is you just cut some leaves off and come back. And it grows more leaves over time, over and over again. Um, there's a very famous organic farmer, Elliot Coleman who's growing these things year-round in unheated greenhouses up in Maine. So I know that you can do this anywhere. Every fall, I plant about eight kale plants. I love kale. I really do. It takes about 25 square feet. And uh, kale is just one of those super power vegetables. It's loaded with good nutrition. So once these plants get up and going in the fall, I just clip one leaf from each of the eight plants every other day or so. And I'm getting, you know, about four, three or four bunches of kale every week. Um, I'm eating a lot of the kale. I do the same with the spinach. I do the same with the lettuce. You just keep coming back over and over again. They will grow a little more slowly uh, when it's, you know, way overcast or a little bit cold, but as soon as it warms back up and you get some sun, then they just keep producing again. I, again, I eat them all winter uh, and, and into the spring. Let's talk about carrots. Oh, beautiful orange beta carotene. Uh, you can get 10 to 30 pounds in just 10 square feet. I love carrots. Uh, if you want to get kids in the garden, sweet corn. One of the best ways to do it, no doubt. Um, it, corn really does like a little bit larger area, so 50 square feet is sort of a bare minimum. But, um, you know, I just usually grow it because the kids will go out into the yard and eat it. They go out without being told even. In fact, I love it that my kids treat the yard like a snack bar. Actually, my kids, the neighbor's kids, and the kids I teach at school, they eat fresh vegetables right out of the garden that they would never touch if you brought them from the grocery store. Anyway, with sweet corn, you can get eight and a half to 34 pounds in about three months. So we're talking about 3,200 to 13,000 calories strawberries. This is our last one. Grow these just for pure delight. You're not going to get a ton of calories out of these guys. And actually in my yard, it's hard for me to even get one because the kids see them coming and they put dibs on them. Bobby, that's mine. And this group's over here is Ryan's. And, and actually, uh, they keep complete track of who's getting what. And uh, But anyway, that's the whole point, isn't it? So I think you're going to see it's pretty easy to get that other 6,100 calories, even out of just a little 50-square-foot garden bed. Yeah, you know, sometimes there's going to be setbacks, but that's part of the adventure. 
and you can see why you'll be easily able to produce the balance. So there you go. And we've got the caloric component. We've got the rabbits for meat, we've got the eggs, and we've got the vegetables and fruits and deliciousness, color and nutritious. Yum, yum. So what are you going to do with some of this? Here, I'll show you, I'll show you a very typical breakfast for me in the fall, the winter, and the, and the spring, just as I was telling you. In the morning, I put a little kale I put in, in a pan with some butter, and I let it saute for a few minutes. I plop a couple of eggs on top, sprinkle a little salt, put it on low. I come back. I really, in just a few minutes, I've got the most healthy, delicious, beautiful breakfast you could want. Really, I mean, it's just six or eight minutes, and it's cooked, and it's fantastic, and uh, I glue most of it myself. Isn't that a lovely quiche? I don't eat a lot of wheat or grain products, so I make a delicious crustless quiche. Yum, yum. And then, of course, there's deviled eggs. You know you know how to cook eggs. There's just a ton of things that you can do with eggs. Now, rabbit meat. Anything that you can do with chicken meat, you can do with rabbit meat. In fact, there have been a lot of times when I've had folks over for dinner, and I, I mean, we just forgot to tell them it was rabbit meat, and they just assumed it was chicken, and we never got any comments at all. Uh, you can grill rabbit meat just like chicken. You can stir fry it with vegetables, or you can roast it or bake it. Uh, you know, as I said, anything that you can do with chicken, you can do with rabbit meat. Now, here's one thing that you might not have thought about, and that with this system, it does not require any refrigeration or electricity. You pick those vegetables right out of the garden. Eggs can store for weeks on end without refrigeration. And then the rabbits, you can home butcher a rabbit and have it in the pot within 20 to 30 minutes. One rabbit will make a good sized meal for a family of four and wouldn't wouldn't need a refrigerator at all. In fact, we meet, eat most of it that night and let the bones and remainder simmer in the soup for the next night just on the back of the stove. So that's you know one of those just in case kind of thoughts, right? Now, are you ready to grow? I've got a fast start program for you, and this will get you up to speed quickly. First, create a garden bed. Just go out, you know, 50 square feet, 100 square feet, start small. Just get a garden bed going. This is the perfect size, as I've said, for a beginner. Next thing, you're going to want to focus on raising some rabbits. So go out, you know, get a cage, uh, check out Craigslist, or maybe your local feed stores, uh, and pick up a buck and a couple of breeding does. Uh, New Zealand whites are the ones I'd highly recommend, or California. Mixed breeds are also good. The next thing you're going to want to do is get going with some chickens and some egg productions. You know, uh, one rooster and five laying hens. Uh, you'll have so much fun with those coops. Uh, these people, uh, now it's getting to be a rage to do backyard chickens, and I just love, there's these castles and condominiums and tractors and all these different designs. I, I don't think the chickens really care that much, but it is a lot of fun. So a great question that often comes up about this is, okay, so I got this all going, but what about the feed and fertilizer for the system? And that's a really good question. So, yes, in the beginning, make life simpler on yourself and buy pellets for the rabbits and grains for the chicken and compost and some soil amendments for your garden. But here is the really great news. Growing at least half of the food supply for your animals is actually surprisingly easy, too. Now, that's a bit more of an advanced topic than we can cover in this introduction, and when you're ready for that, we get into those higher levels of sustainability uh, at the GROW community. So let's also talk about how much time it takes to operate this three-component system. I mean, this really is less than, uh, you know, an hour a day on average. Um, for example, uh, there will be times when, you know, you need to spend a, a half a day or part of the weekend uh, preparing a garden bed or transplanting or maybe tidying up the chicken coop. But I'm going to tell you, there are lots and lots of mornings when you're just simply checking the water in the feed for the livestock, collecting a few eggs, picking some greens, and literally heading out after only five minutes. But on average, uh, really, it's only about an hour a day. I am not kidding. Also, uh, just for your information, in more advanced levels, you can even set your systems up so that you can be completely gone for two or three days without any impact. Which, that's what I do because I have a lot of you know, speaking engagements and I do television and all, all, other, all other kind of things like that. And it's great. I just come back and empty the nests, and they're just full of eggs, uh, and, uh, and things have grown, and it's beautiful. Another thing you might be thinking is, gosh, you know, 
this is really great, except for could I really just eat rabbits and kale and eggs all the time? No, of course not. I manage an extensive research center, and we've been working on this question for years, and we're actually developing five different systems that will meet at least half of your caloric needs and will require less than an hour a day to operate. We're developing an aquaponics system that's based on fish, vegetables, and quail, and get this, the entire system with the aquaponics and quail fits into only a 12 by 36 space. Uh, and for those of you that are concerned you're vegetarians, well, we're working on a vegan diet, which can be done in less than 800 square feet. This system is based on root crops, either potatoes or su sweet potatoes, depending on what region you're in, and vegetables, and then some grains. Uh, another one, which is my favorite, I love this, but this is not a quick start program. It takes a few years to develop, but this is a food forest. In about a thousand square feet, you plant a polyculture of perennials, and you'll be producing nuts and seeds, perennial vegetables, and lots of fruits in your backyard food forest. Some other systems that we're currently deciding on or considering whether we want to research or not is, well, you love bacon. I love bacon. <laughs> we're investigating a system based on miniature pigs. Anyway, our focus is always on systems that an individual or family could do in a backyard size space with, for people with limited time. Now, the rabbits, chicken, and eggs uh, vegetable system is our most thoroughly tested system, and it's the fastest to get up and running. And, uh, you know, getting each of these components will realistically take you about two months. So, you know, spend a couple of months, get a garden bed going. Uh, then spend the uh, look, uh, spend another couple months and get the rabbits and then and then get going with the chickens and the egg production. And in no time at all, you'll be looking down at your di dinner plate and you'll be smiling a big fat smile of satisfaction and you'll be casually mentioning to your friends, oh, yeah, I, I grew that. Uh, yeah, I collected those eggs this morning. In less than two generations, we have lost the ability to provide for our basic needs to feed ourselves. Quite frankly, the experiment of letting big corporations grow and prepare our food has, has frankly, it's been a big mistake. Our adventure in this day and age is to rediscover and create fun and easy and simple ways to grow food and medicine, to heal ourselves and to reclaim our self-reliance and independence. The online Grow Community Research Center and websites are dedicated to being the most useful online research for growing, preparing, and preserving your own food and medicine. We highly value authenticity and integrity, and I'll let you know in a heartbreak what did or didn't work, and if it's only something we're trying or if it's something we've been doing successfully for years. Another really quick way to get you up to speed is to watch the video set I created called Grow Your Own Groceries, <laughs> surprisingly enough, right? It comes with two DVDs, and, and the videos are, it's actually more, much more than just this three-component system. It's, it's like me taking you by the hand and giving you a personal in-depth tour of my food production system. I show you everything, like the, the rainwater collection systems, uh, what gardening method is really the easiest and the biggest mistakes that I made. Growing a food forest, um, how to protect your food from predators, uh, edible landscaping, and, and, and a lot more. In the rabbit section of the video, yes, of course, any good movie, we're going to have sex, right? <laughs> of course, I show you how to breed them. <laughs> and, and there's death, because I, I show you how to butcher at home. And I do it with a lot of honor and reverence for the life of the animal. Actually, one of the most commented sections on the video set is the butchering section. And uh, many, many vegetarians have come to me and told me, and they say, they say something like this, you know, the butchering section was so well done and with such tenderness and care that even if I don't feel like I could, like I need to do it right now, I feel I could do it if I had to. Now, since you've watched this video this far, you've earned a, a special offer. I mean, you've hung with me. I really feel I should give you something. So... Click on the Buy Now button below, and you'll get a 25% discount on the Grow Your Own Groceries video set. You're lucky enough to be the first in a group of people that we're trying this out with, and yes, we're probably going to uh, switch this back to the full price after we get this whole 
first series of tests done. So if you want to jump on this right now and save a few bucks, uh, click on the buy now button and get the video delivered to your door. It'd just be for, and you'll get a 25% discount. Oh, and I, I flashed that other screen up. I definitely want you to know before I forget, the video set comes with a bonus. In our package, in addition to the two DVDs, I'll send you a bonus CD with a bunch of extra documents to help you in your system. And here's the, here's the list of just 10 of the PDF documents that are included on the CD. Tanning a rabbit hide, setting up and operating small ponds for catfish, companion planting guide for your garden, designing with permaculture, making free fertilizer, a seed saving book, a whole book on seed saving, rainwater collection systems, um, making homemade insecticide, um, growing and pressing seeds for oil, and how to make acorns taste delicious. If you've got an oak tree in your yard and you've got acorns, oh my god, it's really pretty simple to do. And I'm going to tell you, acorn meal pancakes, Aunt Jemima ain't got nothing. <laughs> So jump on this now. My crew will ship this whole kit out to you, which includes the two DVDs plus the bonus CD that has all of the PDF documents on it. This is normally $37 plus shipping and handling, but if you click the Buy Now button right now, you'll get 25% off. Homegrown food on every table. Join the adventure and grow.